that is, what are the problems that are encountered and what are the new facts and what is to be done for liver disease in type 2 diabetes. This is the magnitude of problem in liver disease and diabetes. Totally, 7% of patients with the, uh, 7 of patients with the liver disease have diabetes. That is a huge number. That is around 20.8 20, 20 million people having diabetes as well as liver disease. These data are not Indian data, these are Western data. And 90 to 95% of these diseases, the pathophysiology is hyper uh, insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia that leads to liver disease. And this is the sixth leading cause of death in US. And again, this is the magnitude. Liver disease is the most important cause of death in type 2 diabetes. In the population based Revenor diabetes study, cirrhosis was the fourth leading cause of death and accounted for 4.4% of diabetes related death. If you see the standardized mortality ratio, the patient with cirrhosis with the diabetes have the high mortality than patient with cirrhosis with cardiovascular disease. But that is the importance of diabetes and liver disease. And again, diabetes related non alcoholic fatty liver disease is the most common cause of liver disease in the US. The most common chronic liver disease in general population is the LAFLD, that is non alcoholic fatty liver disease. And third leading indication for liver transplantation is cryptogenic cirrhosis. Previously, we thought of non alcoholic and non, non B and non C, we thought of the cryptogenic cirrhosis. Now we realize that these are all everything related with NAFLD related cirrhosis. Unfortunately, the Indian data is not lacking. Uh, actually, we divided the liver disease and diabetes into three different groups. First group is patient with diabetes, diabetes that leads to liver disease, that is one group. And second group, patient primarily having liver disease that leads to diabetes. And third, patient concomitantly having both diabetes and liver disease. The liver disease and diabetes, liver disease occurring as a consequence of diabetes are one due to glycogen depression and second stenosis and non-alcoholic steatohepatitis and fibrosis and cirrhosis and increased incidence of bleary disease, polylithiasis and cholecystitis and the complications of therapy of diabetes. And second group, diabetes and abnormalities of glucose with homeostasis occurring as a complication of liver disease like hepatitis, cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma and permanent hepatic failure and post orthoptic liver transplantation. And third group, liver disease and diabetes occurring coincidentally with the abnormalities of glucose homeostasis like hemochromatosis, glycogen storage disease and autoimmune bleary disease. Coming to the spectrum, what are the spectrum of liver disease in the diabetes patient? Virtually the entire spectrum is seen. Any spectrum of liver disease is seen in diabetes patient. The most common abnormality is a, a enzyme elevation, abnormal liver enzymes, and non alcoholic fatty liver disease, cirrhosis, hepatocellular carcinoma, and acute liver, liver cell failure. But unexplained association, there will be an increased incidence of hepatitis C and diabetes. And finally, prevalence of diabetes and cirrhosis around 12.3 to 57 percent. Thus, patients with diabetes have a high prevalence of liver disease, and patients with liver disease have high prevalence of diabetes. Coming to abnormal liver enzymes, most of the time, patients are in asymptomatic. Asymptomatic enzyme, enzyme liver, liver enzyme elevation, AST and ALT elevation, and compared to non diabetic group, it's around 2 to 24 percent. In non diabetic group, it's only 0.5 percent. This is, a poor, uh, this is revealed in four clinical trials involving 3,700 patients with the type 2 diabetes that shows uh, abnormal liver enzyme elevation in 2 to 24 percent. The investigators also found that 5 percent of these patients had concomitant liver disease. And uh, as I told previously, the enzyme elevation is mostly mostly due to fatty liver and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. The, again, the most in general population, most common chronic liver disease is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It's defined as fatty liver disease in the absence of less than 20 gram of alcohol per day. That is, 
Yeah, whenever a patient comes with a report of fatty liver, any ultrasound report suggests you have fatty liver, you have to exclude the alcohol intake. If the patient is taking alcohol more than 20 grams per day, it's not due to non-alcoholic fatty liver. By we are measuring the 200, 250 ml of brandy, 250 ml of beer, and 100 ml of wine, and 30 ml of brandy contains 10 grams of alcohol. By calculating this, we can exclude the alcoholic fatty liver. The prevalence of MAFD in diabetes is around 34 to 74 percent, which is huge high. In patients with diabetes with obesity, it virtually goes to around 100 percent. Once NAFLD thought that it's a brain process, now we are all realized that NAFLD that leads to non-alcoholic fatal hepatitis that can lead to cirrhosis and epidermal carcinoma. In patients with NAFLD, 50 percent have the chance to develop NASH, that is non-alcoholic fatal hepatitis, and 19 percent have cirrhosis at the time of diagnosis. Is NAFLD is evident based? Yes. This is a study from 2008 from Paul Mercure et al. Uh, they suggested that spectrum or the clinical course of NAFLD from steatosis alone through the necroinflammatory disorder, non alcoholic steatal hepatitis to cirrhosis and liver cancer. Coming to fatty liver. Fatty liver, usually patient have asymptomatic, it's an incidental finding. Usually patient went to for some other checkup, they incidentally found to be the fatty liver report. And usually if, um, if at all the patient has a symptom of vague right upper quadrant pain, and most of the times the liver enzyme is normal, if at all there will be a mild derivation of ASD and ALD. The pathogenesis of fatty liver is partially understood. Hepatic cytosis is imbalance between the uptake and synthesis of fatty acid by the liver and their oxidation and export. Patients with type 2 diabetes have dyslipidemia, which is characterized by elevated triglycerides and low HDL and high LDL. This pattern also seen in patients with NAFLD. And the central abnormality of the pathogenesis of fatty liver, fatty liver and NAFLD is the insulin resistance. Insulin resistance that leads to hyperinsulinemia and hyperinsulinemia that leads to there will be an imbalance between the cytokines. That is, protective cytokine adiponectin will be less and destructive cytokine TNF alpha will be high. That leads to uh, fatty acid overload to the hepatic mitochondrial system, that accumulation of fatty acids and the liver. Again, this adiponectin in contrast to TNF alpha is anti lipogenic and anti inflammatory. It protects the liver from liquid accumulation and inflammation. Adiponectin levels are low in patients with NAFLD and the TNF alpha level will be high in patients with NAFLD. NAFLD patient is mostly related with visceral adiposity, obesity, and type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndrome. So, pathogenicity of NAFLD includes overnutrition and underactivity, insulin resistance, and some certain genetic factors also play in the pathogenesis. The prevalence of NAFLD is 17 to 33 percent in some countries. NASH is about one third in this group, and 20 to 25 percent of patients with non-alcoholic state hepatitis progress to cirrhosis. NAFLD is the one of the most frequent reason of liver test elevation without any clinical symptoms. Asymptomatic enzyme abnormalities first you have to stop, stop NAFLD. The coming to treatment of fatty liver, the most important therapeutic measure is increase the insulin sensitivity by attempt to change their lifestyle mostly by dieting and physical activity in order to reduce weight. The most common, usually, mostly used drug is metformin. NAS is not a common indication for liver, liver transplantation because of patient, most of the patient present with the older age and high prevalence of comorbidity and also they related with metabolic syndrome. And recurrence of mass in graft and liver, it's a relatively frequent complication. So non-organic uh, fatty liver can occur even after liver transplantation. Coming to cirrhosis and diabetes. Cirrhosis is an important cause of death in diabetes. And autopsy study in the US patients with the diabetes have increased incidence of severe cirrhosis. And Verona study, Again, it shows the patient with cirrhosis with the diabetes have high mortality, 
than patient with um, cardiovascular disease. And cryptogenic cirrhosis, previously thought of cryptogenic, now it's NIFL degenerative cirrhosis, is the third leading cause, leading indication for liver transplantation. Some association with the cirrhosis and diabetes. In fact, cirrhosis itself is associated with insulin resistance, and the impaired glucose tolerance is seen in 60% of patients, and the over diabetes in 20% of patients with cirrhosis, and insulin mediated glucose dispersal and reduced by 50% of patients with cirrhotic patients. Onset of type 2 diabetes in cirrhotic patient is associated with decreased insulin circulation and patient with cirrhosis and diabetes have increased mortality. Coming to insulin autoimmune syndrome, this is a syndrome associated with the high levels of insulin autoantibodies auto even in the absence of epidermal carcinoma that leads to cirrhotic patient develop fasting hypoglycemia. Coming to new terminology, epidermal diabetes. It's uh, presented in World Journal of uh, Gastroenterology 2009 by Gorica et al. They uh, suggest that uh, term hepatogenous diabetes. Diabetes which develops as a complication of cirrhosis is called hepatogenous diabetes. 30% in this study, 30% of patients with cirrhosis have diabetes. And they have the debate whether type 2 diabetes in the absence of obesity and hyperdiglycemia may be a risk factor for chronic liver disease. Coming to, uh, already discussed the pathophysiology, the insulin resistance is a major uh, pathogenesis for the NAFLD as well as this hepatogenous diabetes. And insulin resistance in muscular and adipose tissue and hyperinsulinemia, that is the pathophysiology, that increase in part is response of islet beta cells of pancreas and hepatic insulin resistance. And patients with uh, NAFLD, alcoholic cirrhosis, and even chronic hepatitis C virus infection, and hemochromatosis, all are associated with the diabetes in the way, when And patients with the insulin resistance increase the failure of response to interferon therapy in patients with uh, chronic hepatitis C. So, my diabetes in cirrhotic patients, even subclinical. And hepatogenic diabetes, is it different from type 2 diabetes? Yes. The complications, they are less frequently associated with microangiopathy complications. And also patients with diabetes have increased mortality of cirrhotic patients. And hepatosolar carcinoma and diabetes, yes, hepatosolar carcinoma, there is studies shows that fourfold increased prevalence of SCC in patients with diabetes, and in, as well as increased prevalence of diabetes in patients with SCC. The vice versa, both are true. The sequence, why the sequence of events that leads to SCC in diabetic patients are, one is insulin resistance, and two is increased lipolysis, and liquid accumulation in the hepatocytes, and the oxidative stress, and cell damage followed by fibrosis, and cell proliferation, all are pro carcinogenic and hepatocellular carcinoma by the paraneoplastic manifestation, it will produce insulin-like growth factor 2 that leads to hypoglycemia. Coming to liver failure, yes, the incidence of acute liver failure is slightly higher compared to control group, non-diabetic group. This is 2.31 per 10,000 persons here compared with 1.44 in the background population. And permanent hepatic failure, patient with permanent hepatic failure with hypoglycemia is an independent poor prognostic marker. And hepatitis in diabetes, there is no evidence that viral hepatitis has the worst prognosis in patients with the diabetes. However, there will be increased prevalence in increased prevalence of viral hepatitis in diabetes patients, possibly due to increased exposure to needles for the injection of insulin or for blood testing. Coming to hepatitis C virus and diabetes association, there are six genotypes in hepatitis C virus. The prevalence of fatty liver disease high in hepatitis C virus, particularly genotype 3, secondary to insulin resistance. And type 1 diabetes occurs more frequently in patients treated with interferon or HCV. And there will be a strong epidemiological evidence suggesting the increased prevalence of HCV in diabetes. All with type 2 diabetes and persistently elevated serum ANT should be screened for HCV infection. This point I want to stress. 
patient with a type 2 diabetes with a persistently elevated serum ALT level should be screened for hepatitis C virus infection. And hepatitis C virus and diabetes, usually if patient transplanted for SCV, are more likely to develop diabetes. Taken together, hepatitis C virus may play a pathogenic role in type 2 diabetes. The core protein of hepatitis C virus that impacts the insulin receptor substrate signaling that leads to the development of diabetes. This is new. Now both we are status, we are heard about the statosis. There are two types of statosis with viral statosis and metabolic statosis. This is from 2000 study, 2010 from German study, Machine et al. The hepatitis C virus with a type 3 infection, it's mainly viral related factors, not due to metabolic factors. So it's called viral statosis. And SCV type 1, 2, and 4, it's mainly metabolic factor that leads to teratosis. It's called metabolic teratosis. Coming to interferon therapy for hepatitis C virus infection, interferon that may lead to hyperglycemia so that patients uh, increase insulin requirement in patients with type 1 diabetic. Coming to liver disease, coincidentally, there will be an abnormality of uh, glucose homeostasis, hemochromatosis. We are all know that it's autosomal recessive. It's abnormally high absorption of iron from the small intestine and the excessive accumulation of iron in the liver and other tissue that leads to progressive liver disease like cirrhosis and even if you most commonly leads to hepatocellular carcinoma. It's also called Brown's diabetes. It's called a term coined by Hanart in 1986 and 75% of patients with hemochromatosis and established cirrhosis have diabetes. 75% of patients with hemochromatosis have diabetes. Patients, uh, this point I am going to stress, patients with diabetes who have family history of liver disease should be screened for hemochromatosis. Coming to increased incidence of biliary disease, cholelithiasis, and cholecystitis, there will be an increased incidence because of two to three fold increased incidence, uh, incidence of gallstones in diabetic patients because of there will be a uh, biliary dyskinesia, gall bladder ejection fraction will be less in patients with diabetes, so that bile stasis occurs and secretion of lipogenic bile by the liver in patients with type 2 diabetes will dispose to forming the gallstone. Is whether it's a prophylactic cholecystitis is advisable in patients with asymptomatic gallstone disease? Nowadays, no. Evidence based, there will be no, no guidance that recommends the prophylactic cholecystectomy in asymptomatic gallstone disease in diabetic patients. Coming to another disease, glycogen storage disease, it's an uh, infant usually affected, required a uh, frequent carbohydrate feeding every two to three hours to prevent uh, brain damage. Glycogen content in the liver, livers, most of these affected in patients is excessive. Is most common is type 1 glycogen storage disease. It's due to glucose 6 phosphatase enzyme deficiency. Coming to the next disease, the autoimmune biliary disease. The type 1 diabetes is one of the manifestations of autoimmune polyglandular syndrome. It's mostly is a primary biliary acidosis and primary sclerosis and cholangitis associated with the type 1 diabetes. Coming to liver transplantation and diabetes, it's presented in 2002 transplantation journal. The effect of insulin dependent diabetes mellitus on outcome of transplantation has both type 1 diabetes and coronary artery disease. Both are independent four predictors of liver transplantation. Four predictors of outcome of after liver transplantation. Now, that is, they have the 40% lower five year survival rate compared with without diabetes and without coronary artery disease. Caution and anti they suggested 4 to 20 percent incidence of post transplant diabetes following the liver transplantation. In the trial at all, the retrospectively seen 497 patients who received autopsy liver transplantation developed diabetes. Concluded that presence of post transplant diabetes did not significantly affect the patient outcome in the first year, but it affects the overall mortality. Coming to the immunosuppressive drugs that usually after the post liver, uh, liver transplantation. FK50 is a tacrolimus that leads to, that may cause diabetes, stopping the drug, restoration of normal glucose tolerance. Coming to management of diabetes in patients with 
management of diabetes in patients with liver disease is genetically complicated by one liver related alteration in drug metabolism, two potential interactions between the drug, and four the incident increased incidence of hepatotoxicity. The main mode of management is lifestyle modification, ask them to walk, reduce the weight, and treatment of type 2 diabetes in patients with liver disease is compromised by poor nutritional status and general health. And more than 50% of patients with liver disease are malnourished. And studies indicate that weight loss decreases hepatic cirrhosis and low glycemic, low calorie diet with a weight loss not more than 1 to 2 kg per week. Weight loss more than 1 to 2 kg per week also leads to other adverse effects. And low fat diet should not be should be advised. Coming to a Mediterranean diet, the high complex carbohydrates and high monounsaturated fats and moderate amounts of wine and low amounts of red meats are preferred in patients with type 2 diabetes. And the exercise improves the peripheral insulin sensitivity. So physical exercise is important in the management. And alcohol avoided not only because of toxic effects, but also its high calorie content and potential interaction with sulfur and urea. Coming to pharmacological therapy is a type 2 diabetes patient with a liver disease. It's now is almost same as that of without the liver disease. But patients with liver, evidence of liver failure, like ascites, coagulopathy, or encephalopathy, have altered drug metabolism. So underlying liver disease and compromise the diagnosis and increase the severity of drug-induced liver disease. So the first-time drug metformin usually is not indicated in presence of liver failure, cirrhosis, and decompensated liver disease. Metformin can be used in fatty liver and non-organ fatty liver state of hepatitis. Recent uh, drugs, recent trials with pyoglitazone and rosiglitazone, improvement in ALT and liver histology. The main side effect of uh, pyoglitazone is the weight gain. If metformin and pyoglitazone are contraindicated, begin with cetidogogs like sulfonylurea, but with rapid advancement of insulin, if glycemic control is not achieved. Insulin cytogogs like sulfonylurea is generally safe in patients with liver disease, but short of life like glyphosate and glyphosate are preferred than long acting sulfonylurea. Other drugs like the epiglutinide, the efficacy of epiglutinide is not reported. The vibaglinide and natiglinide will be a no epitotoxicity. Tolerability of natiglinide in patients with cirrhosis is not different than in control groups. I already told bigonates, the metformin is usually not indicated in presence of liver failure and cirrhosis or decompensation. It can be used in NAFLD. But usually the metformin is not epitotoxic, but few case reports suggest that it, it, uh, metformin itself is epitotoxic. Uh, both uh, mixed type, both hepatocola and polystatic hepatic damage produced by the metformin. This is present in 2005. 2005. Coming to alpha glucosidase inhibitors, a useful in patients with liver disease, it acts directly on the gastrointestinal tract to decrease the carbohydrate digestion and glucose absorption. But acarbose frequently causes mild transient elevation of ALT. But negligible, however, it's not associated with hepatotoxicity. Again, thiazolidins, because of the increased insulin sensitivity, it's a useful in patients with NAFLD. With, uh, before starting the patient with thiazolidins, you have to do the baseline LFT. If the AST, eleva AST LT elevation, more than threefold elevation, don't start with thiazolidins. And frequently monitor the patient with LFT at least twice a month. Monitor is recommended periodically, there are tests as clinically indicated, rather than every two months. Insulin is frequently recorded in patients with diabetes and liver disease. Insulin requirement varies with the patient. In decompensated liver disease, the requirement is decreased due to reduced capacity for gluconeogenesis and also the decreased hepatic breakdown of insulin. Patient with the insulin with liver disease, patient with diabetes on insulin with liver disease, they are more careful to close monitoring is needed. Uh, if at all, we can use the salt-acting insulin. 
I'm coming to statins. Again, statins may cause a enzyme elevation, AST and ALT elevation. Before starting the statins, go for the baseline LFT. If it is a AST and elevation, more than threefold elevation, go, don't go with the statins. Again, AC inhibitors, we are frequently using in a patient with a diabetic. It may implicate in liver hepatic injury, including permanent hepatic failure. The reaction is mostly hepatocellular and losartan associated with hepatotoxicity. Aspirin is potentially hepatotoxic at very high doses. But however, this hepatotoxicity is not described for doses due to for cardiac protection. CT scan to uh, CT scan and ultrasound is a sensitive test for detecting hepatic fat accumulation. However, the both ultrasound or CT does not exclude the microscopic fatty, uh, fatty implantation. So, liver biopsy is needed to exclude the microscopic fatty implantation. Ultrasound is a very good mode. Its sensitivity is around 89 to 93 percent. And treatment of NAFLD is most patients do not require any treatment. Only patients biopsy proved non alcoholic state of hepatitis should be treated. Treatment consists of uh, measure to lose weight as well as to some drugs. There will be no FDA approved treatment, no FDA guidelines for approving drugs for MAFLD. UDCA, role of UDCA in MAFLD. There is three prospective control studies using UDCA, which reduces apoptosis as a cytoprotective properties conductor. The results are mixed. Some uh, studies show that there will be a very good result. Some studies there will be no beneficial. However, increasing interest in this reagent because of its anti apoptotic effect, we can use the drug in NAFLD. And the role of antioxidants in NAFLD, because the one of the uh, pathophysiology is of increased oxidative stress is an important cause for the NASH. So we can use the vitamin E and vitamin C and other antioxidants. But pilot studies with the vitamin E have been conducted with promising results. But meta-analysis of high dose vitamin E revealed increase in overall mortality. Coming to pentoxypelin is uh, again we are already told that there will be an imbalance in the cytokines. That is decrease adiponectin and increase TNF alpha that leads to NASH. If this is a pentoxypelin is a, uh, that inhibits TNF alpha that can be used, but uh, in patients with NASH, again, pilot study shows an improvement in liver enzyme in patients with NASH. However, high incidence of side effects that leads to early withdrawal of the drug. So, ideal therapy in summary, there will be a get to be identi identified. No evidence based recommendations can be made so far. Coming to hepatitis B vaccine in patients with diabetes, effectively induced protective antibodies in most patients with diabetes. But in one study in children with type 1 diabetes with hepatitis B vaccine, they will be not responding to well to vaccination, which suggests that children may need four injections instead of three injections. This is the new term we can call it diabetic hepatopathy. In addition to diabetic glomerulopathy, diabetic retinopathy, diabetic neuropathy, we can coin the term diabetic hepatopathy. So, carry home message is diabetic hepatopathy has come to stay. And NAFLD, no ideal treatment so far. And drug therapy as per the patient. And weight control and good glycemic control is ideal. Annual screening for liver, uh, annual screening for liver screening by ANT test is important. And HCV infection and diabetes is a very special consultation. And thiazolidone, although problematic, so some improvement. Role of utrodeoxycholic, a mixed results. Recurrence of match after transplanting is worrisome. And hepatogenic di diabetes is a new term coined. And diabetic hepatopathy, new addition to the list. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It was a very informative and very exhausting. Covered almost all topics. The subject was very interesting, as well as all the cats. Your slides were very cute and uh, impressive. <laughs> you are just wondering what could be the Anyway, it was nice and thank you very much. Floor is open for discussion. Any, we can just permit two questions if there are any. If there are no questions, we will move on to the uh, next uh, topic. Uh, let me request Dr. Vijay Ratnam to uh, 
Sanjay Rajan to present the memento to the speaker. And I request Dr. Ravindranath to present the memento to the chairperson. Okay, actually, the idea of uh, making this presentation is before you start uh, treatment for diabetes, every patient should be done liver exams. That's the idea. See, asymptomatic elevation of liver enzymes is much commoner in diabetic patients. And the field, actually, it has become non unqualified liver disease, has become much more commoner in India. That's because of obesity. And MASH has become much more commoner. All these things are there. And one of the most important things is in a diabetic, if you have persistent elevation of liver enzymes, think of HCV. Hepatitis C virus. This is very, very important because people, they do not investigate, they do not go about it. Only for those things, because HCV is very, very important, please investigate for those things. Please do liver enzymes. Before you do lipid, because whatever it is you're going to give a drug for liver, uh, statin for the patient, because you'll give HCV to that, aspirin, or those statin. But do, before you start a patient on treatment, please do creatinine, please do liver enzymes. Both are important on treatment part of you for a patient. Yeah. We go ahead. Our next topic is a very important topic which we face day to day in our clinical practice management of a chronic liver disease and diabetes mellitus. To deliver this lecture, we have Dr. Mani Maran, who is an professor of Gastroenterology in Stanley Medical College, Chennai. And I request Dr. Vijay Rathanam to chair the session. I request Dr. Mani Maran to go to the vice please. Session. The topic is on how to manage type 2 diabetes mutant in patients with liver disease. The speaker will be our young gastroenterologist, Dr. M. Manimaran, who is an assistant professor, government talent director, who has just completed his DM in 2010. His area of interest is liver transplant. I request to Dr. Manimaran to deliver his lecture, please. I request Dr. Vijay Ratanam to offer this book to the speaker. Over to the speaker. Good evening. At the outset, I have to thank our organizers as well as my team, Professor and Dr. A. R. for giving me the chance to present this topic. This is something like when Shava gets injured, uh, Murli Vijay or Mugun will get chance to, uh, to open the innings like that. Since my chief is out of session, I am here to present this topic. Uh, warm greetings from the Prestigious Institute, Stanley. That the uh, interest between the diabetes and liver disease has a relevance to diastrologist, hepatologist, and primary care physician. At the end of my talk, these four questions should be addressed. One, what is peculiar to liver disease in type 2 diabetes? What are the problems that are encountered? And what are the new facts? And what is to be done for liver disease in type 2 diabetes? This is the magnitude of problem in liver disease and diabetes. Totally, 7% of patients with the, uh, 7 of patients with the liver disease have diabetes. That is a huge number. That is around 20.8 20, 20 million people having diabetes as well as liver disease. These data are not Indian data. These are Western data. And 90 to 95% of this disease, the pathophysiology is hyper uh, insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia that leads to liver disease. And this is the sixth leading cause of death in US. And again, 
This is the magnitude. Liver disease is the most important cause of death in type 2 diabetes. In the population based Verano diabetes study, cirrhosis was the fourth leading cause of death and accounted for 4.4% of diabetes related death. If you see the standardized mortality ratio, the patient with cirrhosis with the diabetes has the high mortality than patient with cirrhosis with cardiovascular disease. That, that is the importance of diabetes and liver disease. And again, diabetes related non-organic fatty liver disease is the most common cause of liver disease in the US. The most common chronic liver disease in general population is the NAFLD, that is non-organic fatty liver disease. And third leading indication for liver transplantation is cryptogenic cirrhosis. Previously, we thought of non-organic and non-B non and non-C, we thought of the cryptogenic cirrhosis. Now, we realize that these are all everything related with NAFLD related cirrhosis. So, unfortunately, the Indian data are lacking. Uh, actually, we divided the liver disease and diabetes into three different groups. First group is patient with diabetes, diabetes that leads to liver disease, that is one group. And second group, patient primarily having liver disease that leads to diabetes. And third, patient concomitantly having both diabetes and liver disease. The liver disease and diabetes, liver disease occurring as a consequence of diabetes are one due to glycogen repulsion and second, steatosis and non-organic state of and fibrosis and cirrhosis, and increased incidence of bleary disease, cholelithiasis, and cholecystitis, and the complications of therapy of diabetes. And second group, diabetes and abnormalities of glucose free homeostasis occurring as a complication of liver disease, like hepatitis, cirrhosis, and hepatocellular carcinoma, and permanent hepatic failure, and post-orthopedic liver transplantation. And third group, liver disease and diabetes occurring coincidentally with abnormalities of glucose homeostasis, like hemochromatosis, glycogen storage disease, and autoimmune bleary disease. Coming to the spectrum, what are the spectrum of liver disease in the diabetes patient? Virtually the entire spectrum is seen. Any spectrum of liver disease seen in diabetic patient. The most common abnormalities is uh, enzyme elevation, abnormal liver enzymes, and non-organic fatty liver disease, cirrhosis, hepatocellular carcinoma, and acute liver, liver cell failure. But unexplained association, there will be an increased incidence of hepatitis C and diabetes. And finally, prevalence of diabetes and cirrhosis around 4.3 to 57 percent. Thus, patients with diabetes have a high prevalence of liver disease, and patients with liver disease have high prevalence of diabetes. Coming to abnormal liver enzymes, most of the time, patient having asymptomatic. Asymptomatic enzyme, enzyme liver, liver enzyme elevation, AST and ALT elevation, as compared to non-diabetic group, it's around 2 to 24 percent. In non-diabetic group, it's only 0.5 percent. This is a poor, uh, this is revealed in four clinical trials involving 3,700 patients with type 2 diabetes that shows uh, abnormal liver enzyme elevation in 2 to 24 percent. The investigators also found that 5 percent of these patients had concomitant liver disease. And uh, as I told previously, the enzyme elevation is mostly, mostly due to fatty liver and non-organic fatty liver disease. Again, the most in general population, most common chronic liver disease is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It's defined as fatty liver disease in the absence of less than 20 gram of alcohol per day. That is, whenever a patient comes with the report of fatty liver, any ultrasound report suggestive of fatty liver, you have to exclude the alcohol intake. If the patient is taking alcohol more than 20 gram per day, it's not due to non-alcoholic fatty liver. By we are measuring the 200, 250 ml of brandy, 250 ml of uh, beer, and 100 ml of wine, and 30 ml of brandy contains 10 grams of alcohol. By calculating this, we can exclude the alcoholic fatty liver. The prevalence of NAFLD in diabetes is around 34 to 74 percent. That is huge high. You must, in patients with diabetes and obesity, it virtually goes to around 100 percent. Once NAFLD thought that it's a brain process, now we are all realized that 
NAFLD that leads to non-organic pediatric hepatitis that can lead to cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma. In patients with NFLD, 50% has a chance to develop NASH, that is non-organic state of hepatitis, and 19% has cirrhosis at the time of diagnosis. Is NFLD is evidence-based? Yes. This is a study from 2008 from Paul Mercure et al. Um, they suggested the spectrum of the clinical course of NFLD from steatosis alone through the liquid inflammatory disorder, non-organic state of hepatitis, to cirrhosis and liver cancer. Coming to fatty liver, fatty liver usually patients have asymptomatic, it is an incidental finding. Usually patients went to for some other checkup, they incidentally found to be the fatty liver report. And usually um, if at all the patient has a symptom of vague right upper quadrant pain, and most of the times the liver enzyme is normal, if at all there will be a mild elevation of ASP and ALP. The pathogenesis of fatty liver is partially understood. Hepatic cytosis is imbalance between the uptake and synthesis of fatty acid by the liver under their oxidation and export. Patients with type 2 diabetes have dyslipidemia, which is characterized by elevated triglycerides and low HDL and high LDL. This pattern also seen in patients with NAFLD. And the central abnormality of the pathogenesis of fatty liver, fatty liver and NAFLD is the insulin resistance. Insulin resistance that leads to hyperinsulinemia and hyperinsulinemia that leads to there will be an imbalance between the cytokines. That is protective cytokine adiponectin will be less and destructive cytokine TNF alpha will be high. That leads to uh, fatty acid overload to the hepatic mitochondrial system that accumulation of fatty acids and deliver. Again, this adiponectin in contrast to TNF alpha is anti-lipogenic and anti-inflammatory, it protects the liver from liquid accumulation and inflammation. Adiponectin levels are low in patients with NAFLD and the TNF alpha level will be high in patients with NAFLD. NAFLD patient is mostly related with visceral adiposity, obesity and type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndrome. So pathogenicity of NAFLD includes low nutrition and underactivity, insulin resistance, and some certain genetic factors also plays in the pathogenesis. The prevalence of NAFLD is 17 to 33 percent in some countries. NASH is about one third in this group, and 20 to 25 percent of patients with non-alcoholic state of hepatitis progress to cirrhosis. NAFLD is the one of the most Frequent reason of liver test elevation without any clinical symptom. Asymptomatic enzyme abnormality, first we have to stop, stop NAFLD. The coming to treatment of fatty liver, the most important therapeutic measure is increase the insulin sensitivity by attempt to change your lifestyle mostly by dieting and physical activity in order to lose weight. The most common, usually, mostly used to drug is metformin. NASH is not a common indication for liver, liver transplantation because of patient, most of the patients present with the older age and high prevalence of comorbidity and also they are related with metabolic syndrome. And recurrence of NASH in grafted liver is a relatively frequent complication. So non-organic uh, fatty liver can occur even after liver transplantation. Coming to cirrhosis and diabetes. Cirrhosis is an important cause of death in diabetes. And autopsy study in the US patients with the diabetes have increased incidence of severe cirrhosis. And Verona study, again, it shows the patient with cirrhosis with the diabetes have high mortality than patient with um, cardiovascular disease. And cryptogenic cirrhosis, previously thought of cryptogenic, now it's NAFLD related cirrhosis, is the third leading cause leading indication for liver transplantation. Some association with the cirrhosis and diabetes. In fact, cirrhosis itself is associated with insulin resistance and the impaired glucose tolerance is seen in 60% of patients and over diabetes in 20% of patients with cirrhosis. And insulin mediated glucose dispersal and reduced by 50% of patients in cirrhotic patients. Onset of di type 2 diabetes in cirrhotic patients is associated with the decreased insulin secretion and patient with the Cirrhosis and diabetes have increased mortality. Coming to insulin autoimmune syndrome. This is a syndrome 
associated with the uh, high levels of insulin auto, auto antibodies, even in the absence of epitoxin carcinoma, that leads to cirrhotic patient develop fasting hypoglycemia. Coming to new terminology, epitoxinous diabetes, it's uh, present in World Journal uh, Gastroenterology 2009 by Gaurika et al. They uh, suggest that uh, term epitoxinous diabetes, diabetes which develops as a complication of cirrhosis is called epitoxinous diabetes. 30% in this study, 30% of patients with cirrhosis have diabetes and they have the debate whether type 2 diabetes in the absence of obesity and hyperdiagnosis may be a risk factor for chronic liver disease. Coming to, uh, already we discussed the pitophysiology, the insulin resistance is a major uh, pathogenesis for the NAFLD as well as this hepatogenous diabetes. And insulin resistance in muscular and adipose tissue and hyperinsulinemia, that is the pathophysiology, that the interior impaired is response of ionic beta cells of pancreas and hepatic insulin resistance. And patients with uh, NAFLD, alcoholic cirrhosis, and uh, even chronic hepatitis C virus infection, and hemochromatosis, all are associated with diabetic mellitus. And patients with the insulin resistance increase the failure of response to interferon therapy in patients with uh, chronic hepatitis C. So, uh, diabetes in cirrhotic patients, even subclinical. And epitogen is the diabetes. Is it different from type 2 diabetes? Yes. The complications, the, they are less frequently associated with microangiopathy complications. And also patients with the diabetes have increased mortality of cirrhotic patients. And epitocellular carcinoma and diabetes? Yes. Epitocellular carcinoma, there is studies shows that fourfold increased prevalence of SCC in patients with the diabetes and in, as well as increased prevalence of diabetes in patients with SCC. The vice versa, both are true. The sequence, why the sequence of events that leads to SCC in diabetic patients are, one is insulin resistance and two is increased lipolysis and liquid accumulation in the hepatocytes and oxidative stress and cell damage followed by fibrosis and cell proliferation, all are pro-carcinogenic. And epitocellular carcinoma, by the paraneoplastic manifestation, it will produce insulin-like growth factor 2 that leads to hypoglycemia. Coming to liver failure, yes, the incidence of acute liver failure is slightly higher compared to control group, non-diabetic group. This is 2.31 per 10,000 persons here compared with 1.44 in the background population. And fulminant hepatic failure, patient with fulminant hepatic failure with hypoglycemia is an independent poor prognostic marker. And hepatitis in diabetes, there is no evidence that viral hepatitis has the worst prognosis in patients with the diabetes. However, there will be increased prevalence in increased prevalence of viral hepatitis in diabetes patients, possibly due to increased exposure to needles for the injection of insulin or for blood testing. Coming to hepatitis C virus and diabetes association, there are six genotypes in hepatitis C virus. The prevalence of fatty liver disease high in hepatitis C virus, particularly genotype 3, secondary to insulin resistance. And type 1 diabetes occurs more frequently in patients treated with interferon or HCV. And there will be a strong epidemiological evidence suggested of increased prevalence of HCV in diabetes. All with type 2 diabetes and persistently elevated serum ANT should be screened for HCV infection. This point I want to stress. Patient with type 2 diabetes with the persistently elevated serum ANT level should be screened for hepatitis C virus infection. And hepatitis C virus and diabetes, usually patient transplanted for HCV are more likely to develop diabetes. Taken together, hepatitis C virus may play a pathogenic role in type 2 diabetes. The core protein of hepatitis C virus that impacts the insulin receptor substrate signaling that leads to the development of diabetes. This is new. We are both we are status, we are heard about the statosis. There are two types of statosis. There is viral statosis and metabolic statosis. This is from 2000 study, 2010 from German study, Mechim et al. 
where the hepatitis C virus with the type 3 infection is mainly viral related factors, not due to metabolic factors. So it is called viral cytosis and SCV type 1, 2 and 4, it is mainly metabolic factor that leads to cytosis, it is called metabolic cytosis. Coming to interferon therapy for hepatitis C virus infection, interferon that may lead to hyperglycemia so that patient uh, increase insulin requirement in patient with type 1 diabetic. Coming to liver disease, coincidentally there will be abnormalities of uh, glucose homeostasis, hemochromatosis. We are all know that it is autosomal recessive, it is abnormally high absorption of iron from the small intestine and the excessive accumulation of iron in the liver and other tissue that leads to progressive liver disease like cirrhosis and even it is more commonly leads to hepatocellular carcinoma. It is also called Brown's diabetes. It is called uh, term coined by Hanat in 1986 and 75 percent of patients with hemochromatosis and established cirrhosis have diabetes. 75 percent of patients with hemochromatosis have diabetes. Patient, uh, this point I am going to stress, patient with diabetes who have family history of liver disease should be screened for hemochromatosis. Coming to increased incidence of biliary disease, polylithiasis and polycystitis, there will be an increased incidence because of two to three fold increased incidence, uh, incidence of gallstone in diabetic patients. Because of there will be a uh, biliary dyskinesia, gallbladder ejection fraction will be less in patients with diabetes. So that bile stasis occurs and secretion of lipogenic bile by the liver in patients with type 2 diabetes predisposed to forming the gallstone. This, whether it is a prophylactic cholecystitis is advisable in patients with asymptomatic gallstone disease. Nowadays, no. Evidence based, there will be no, no guidelines that recommends a prophylactic cholecystitis in asymptomatic gallstone disease in diabetic patients. Coming to another disease, glycogenesis disease, it is an infant usually affected with frequent carbohydrate feeding every 2 to 3 hours to prevent the brain damage. Glycogen content in the liver, livers, most of the affected in patients is excessive. Its most common is type 1 glycogen storage disease. It is due to glucose 6 phosphatase enzyme deficiency. Coming to the next disease, the autoimmune biliary disease. The type 1 diabetes is one of the manifestations of autoimmune polyglandular syndrome. It is mostly the primary bleeding residuosis and primary sclerosis and cholangitis associated with the type 1 diabetes. Coming to liver transplantation and diabetes, it is present in 2002 transplantation journal. The effect of insulin dependent diabetes mellitus on outcome of transplantation at both type 1 diabetes and coronary artery disease, both are independent core predictors of liver transplantation, core predictors of outcome of after liver transplantation. Uh, that is, they are the 40 percent lower higher survival rate acquired with, without diabetes and without coronary artery disease. Caution and un they suggested 4 to 20 percent incidence of post transplant diabetes following the liver transplantation. In the trial at all, the retrospectively seen 497 patients who received orthopedic liver transplantation developed diabetes. Concluded that presence of post transplant diabetes did not significantly affect the patient outcome in the first year, but it affects the overall mortality. Coming to the immunosuppressive drugs that usually after the post liver transplantation, FK50 is a tacrolimus that leads to, that may cause diabetes, stopping the drug, restoration of normal glucose tolerance. I mean, management of diabetes in patient with, uh, management of diabetes in patient with liver disease is theoretically complicated by one, liver related alteration in drug metabolism, two, potential interactions between the drug, and third, the incident, increased incidence of apnotoxicity. The main Mode of management is lifestyle modification, ask them to walk, reduce the weight, and treatment of type 2 diabetes in patients with liver disease is compromised by poor nutritional status and general health. And more than 50 percent of patients with liver disease are malnourished. And studies indicate that weight loss decreases hepatic cytosine and low glycemic, low calorie diet is a weight loss, not more than 1 to 2 kg per week. Weight loss more than 1 to 2 kg per week also leads to other adverse effects and low fat diet should not be should be advised. 
coming to a Mediterranean diet, the high complex carbohydrates and the high monounsaturated fats and moderate amounts of wine and low amounts of red meats are preferred in patients type 2 diabetes. And the exercise improves the peripheral insulin sensitivity. So, physical exercise is important in the management. And alcohol avoided not only because of toxic effects, but also its high calorie content and potential interaction with functional areas. Coming to pharmacological therapy with a type 2 diabetes patient with a liver disease, it's not, it's almost same as that of without the liver disease. But patients with liver, evidence of liver failure, like ascites, coagulopathy, or encephalopathy, have altered drug metabolism. So underlying liver disease and compromise the diagnosis and increase the severity of drug in this liver disease. So the first time drug metformin usually not indicated in presence of liver failure, cirrhosis, and decompensated liver disease. Metformin can be used in fatty liver and non-organ fatty liver state of, state of hepatitis. Recent uh, drugs, recent trials with the pyoglitazone and rosiglitazone, improvement in ALT and liver histology. The main side effect of pyoglitazone is the weight gain. If metformin and thiazolidins are contraindicated, begin with secretogogues like sulfonylurea, but with the rapid advance of the insulin, if glycemic control is not achieved. Insulin secretogogues like sulfonylurea are generally safe in patients with liver disease, but short half life like glyphosate and glycuride are preferred than long acting sulfonylurea. Other drugs like the efficacy the efficacy of meglitinide is not reported. The vibaglinide and natiglinide will be a low hepatotoxicity. Tolerability of natiglinide in patients with cirrhosis is not different than in control groups. I already told bygonex, the metformin is usually not indicated in the presence of liver failure and cirrhosis or decompensation. It can be used in any FLD. But Usually, the met um, uh, metformin is not hepatotoxic, but few case reports suggested that it is, it, uh, metformin itself is a hepatotoxic. The both uh, mixed type, both hepatocella and polystatic hepatic damage produced by the metformin. This is present in 2005. Coming to alpha glucosidase inhibitors, the useful in patient with the liver disease. It acts directly on the gastrointestinal tract to decrease the carbohydrate digestion and glucose absorption. But acarbose frequently causes mild transient elevation of ALT, but neglitol alcohol is not associated with the hepatotoxicity. Again, thiazolidins, because of the increase in insulin sensitivity, it is useful in patients with the NAFLD. Before starting the patient with the thiazolidins, you have to do the baseline LFT. If the AST ALT elevation more than threefold elevation, don't start with the thiazolidins and frequently monitor the patient with the LFT at least twice a month. Monitor is recommended periodically, thereafter, as clinically indicated, rather than every two months. Insulin is frequently recorded in patients with diabetes and liver disease. Insulin requirement varies with the patient. In decompensated liver disease, the requirement is decreased due to reduced capacity for gluconeogenesis and also the decreased hepatic breakdown of insulin. Patients with the insulin with the liver disease, patients with the diabetes or insulin with the liver disease, they have more careful close monitoring is needed. Uh, if at all, we can use the short acting insulin. And coming to statins, again statins may cause a Lindsay elevation, AST and ALT elevation. Before starting the statins, go for the baseline LFT. If it is a AST ALT elevation, more than threefold elevation, don't, don't go with the statins. Again, AC inhibitors we are frequently using in a patient with a diabetic. It may be implicated in liver hepatic injury, including fulminant hepatic failure. The reaction is mostly hepatic cellular. And losartan associated with hepatotoxicity. Aspirin is potentially hepatotoxic at very high doses. But however, this hepatotoxicity is not described with dose and used for cardiac protection. 
CT scan to uh, CT scan and ultrasound a sensitive test for detecting hepatic fat accumulation. However, the both ultrasound or CT does not exclude the microscopic fat uh, fatty infiltration. So, liver biopsy is needed to exclude the microscopic fatty infiltration. Ultrasound is a very good mode. Its sensitivity is around 89 to 93 percent. Our treatment of NAFLD is most patients do not recommend any treatment. Only patients biopsy proved non organic state of hepatitis should be treated. Treatment consists of uh, measures to lose weight as well as to some drugs. There will be no FDA approved treatment, no FDA guidelines for approving drugs for NAFLD. UDCA, role of UDCA in NAFLD, there is pre prospective control studies using UDCA which reduces apoptosis as a cytoprotective properties conductor. The results are based. Some uh, studies shows that there will be a very good result. Some studies there will be no beneficial. However, increasing interest in these reagents because of its anti apoptotic effect, we can use the drug in NAFLD. And the role of antioxidants in NAFLD, because the one of the uh, pathophysiology is of increased oxidative stress is the important cause for the NASH. So we can use the vitamin E and vitamin C and other antioxidants. But final studies with vitamin E have been conducted with promising results. But meta-analysis of high dose vitamin E revealed increase in overall mortality. Coming to pentoxifenin is a, again we are already told that there will be a imbalance in the cytokines. That is decrease adiponectin and increase TNF alpha that leads to NASH. If this is a pentoxifenin is a uh, that inhibits TNF alpha that can be used, but uh, in patients with NASH, again, pilot studies shows the improvement in liver enzyme in patients with NASH. However, high incidence of side effects that leads to early withdrawal of the drug. So, ideal therapy in summary, the idea yet to be identi identified. No evidence based recommendations can be made so far. Coming to hepatitis B vaccine in patients with diabetes, effectively induce protective antibodies in most patients with diabetes. But in one study in children with type 1 diabetes with the hepatitis B vaccine, the rebate are not responding to well to vaccination, which suggests that children may need four injections instead of three injections. If we, this is the new term we can call it diabetic hepatopathy. In addition to diabetic glomerulopathy, diabetic retinopathy, and diabetic neuropathy, we can coin the term diabetic hepatopathy. So, carry home message is diabetic hepatopathy has come to stay. And NAFLD, no ideal treatment so far. And drug therapy as per the patient. And weight control and good glycemic control is ideal. Annual screening for liver, uh, annual screening for liver screening by ANT test is important. And HCV infection and diabetes is a special consideration. And thiazolidomes, although problematic, show some improvement. Role of eusodioxicolic, which 